Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number one hundred and three. They keep making tech. We keep talking about it. I know it, and ranting and yeah, and we got a couple of rants tonight. So make sure you're you're here for that. It's getting rantier. <laughs> yeah, but as long as it doesn't get rancid, that's the most important. <laughs> yeah, thing. no spoiling. Um, if you have a question, throw it in the chat room, and that way. We can answer that question. So we want to hear from you. You got problems with your home studio, question about some equipment uh, or a technique with software or something like that. We're the guys to talk to. So stay tuned. Time for voiceover body shop tech talk right now. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes, VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success, and by World Voices, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. All righty. Well, we got lots of stuff to talk about tonight, but we always lead off with this because, believe it or not, the reason this show exists, and we've been on the internet for 12 years, which boggles our minds every time we think about it. Um, and somehow we keep come up with stuff to Wait, talk about. Wait, there was internet 12 years ago? There was internet well, 12 years ago. When we were dialing up modems back then? Almost. <laughs> yeah. There may be a few people like that. But uh, when it comes to home voiceover studios, you know, there's really only two guys that really know what they're doing. There are other guys that are engineers. They understand what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. How you get there varies because every voice is different every room is different every budget is different that's for darn sure and so our job as voice actors and voiceover engineers is to make sure that you sound your best and if you don't understand how it all works we explain it to you believe it or not i have a master's degree in education so and I, I have a high school <laughs> Part-time <laughs> teaching gig, teaching kids science. <laughs> Not the same. Wait, we're at the Franklin Institute. Yes. And, uh, wow, amazing how I would pick that one out of my out of my ear. Not a degree. Okay. But teaching okay. is always both is important to both of us. Right. Teaching is is a lot of fun, especially when somebody actually wants to learn what you're telling them yeah. and explaining to them. I got to do it to a bunch of people in Lagos, Nigeria last weekend. How cool is that? At, yeah. a, at a big voice conference, VoiceOver 4.0 in, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a lot of fun and totally unscripted and mm -hmm. go through the routine. This is what you need to do for a home studio. So if you need help with your home studio, and the point is, is that we've been doing this for 12 years, the initial idea with this and still maintained as that is shameless promotion of what George and I do. Because if you didn't do this, you wouldn't even know we were there. Well, you right. might, but uh, <laughs> anyway, if you would like to work with one of us and help you with your home studio and teach you how to do it right or something with software or if, you're, if you've got a technical issue, my mic sounds like crap. Why is that? Mm -hmm. or, or my phone isn't on vibrate the okay. way it's supposed to be. All right, well, the, we'll you'll get back to them. Anyway, if you need help with that, you can work with either one of us. And if you want to work with George, you go over to George the dot tech. There it is, right? And there. we have an ever expanding team, huge website uh, <laughs> of of techs. If you go to George the dot tech, we have updated the banner to show you that we are more than just George. We are a team, and we've got folks that are specialists in a wide, wide range of softwares, technologies, techniques. And a new thing we're working on soon is having what I call virtual on-demand engineers so Ooh. that you'll be able to, if you've got to get something edited uh, and you're like, oh my God, I, I can't get that done and still audition for this really important gig and take the kids home from school 
sometimes something's got to give. Sometimes you need a virtual engineer to help you edit. This is something we're adding to our roster of services. Stay tuned. We're working out the details, but we're, I'm really excited to be able to start offering these types of services. And we have some of the best people you know. <laughs> People you know are working with George you know, the Tech. Well, you know, and, we've, yeah. Dan's on the team. We've added, we just added Jim Edgar, believe it or oh, not. Wow. He wants yeah, to work with us now. It's just, we have the greatest team of folks over there. So head over to georgethe.tech. And Dan, he's helping you out with your home studios too, over his place on the web. And that's homevoiceoverstudio.com. Mm -hmm. Real easy to remember, especially if you want to have a home voiceover studio. Right. And uh, <laughs> what my thing there is my specimen collection cup. Yeah, some people say, that's really silly. Well, that was the idea. It gets Very your important. attention. Yeah. And what you can do is you can drop off a specimen of your audio so I can give it a listen, give it a very, very thorough analysis and see if if it sounds great, I'm going to go, it sounds great. Maybe your levels are a little off. Maybe there's a little bit of acoustical issues with that. Maybe you're too close to the microphone. Maybe you're too far away from the microphone. Right. Maybe you're talking into the wrong side of the microphone. You know, that sort of thing. That's what that sounds like, by and the way. That, by the way, and that, that is what it sounds like. <laughs> um, so check us out at, at georgethe.tech or homevoiceoverstudio.com and get your audio sounding what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. All right. Well, let's get into the real meat of the matter here. And that is starting with George's tech update. And why is this? Why does he have this thing on his lap? It looks like he's playing a dulcimer. I have an unboxing. Okay, he's going to yes, do an unboxing. I have an us. unboxing. Yeah. Did I bring my unboxing knife? No, I did not bring my unboxing knife. So do you have a knife or scissor it, or anything? It's out sure. in the new shed. All right. Well, I will use the, the claw hammer. of this hammer. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Over the years of going to trade shows like the NAM Music Trade Show, I've made a lot of vendor contacts. And one of the longest standing, longest history of vendor contacts that I've gotten to know is a fellow named Chris Courier. Super nice guy. And Dan's met Chris as well. Chris has worked his way up in the ranks at Sennheiser, which owns Neumann, by the way. And anyway, we've known him a really long time. Well, out of the blue, he contacted me a couple months ago. And he said, would you like to try our new streaming podcasting microphone? And I said, yes, of course. And here it is. This is the Profile USB streaming set. So this is the, the model that comes with a nice boom arm for the table, which I think is a huge deal. I mean, there's the Blue Yetis and all these other USB mics the Rode NT USB, but uh, most of them come with a little tiny desktop tripod. This comes with a proper boom arm, which I think if you really are gonna be serious about your uh, beginning voiceover mic, it needs to be in the right place, yeah. right? Oh. Now, I consider a USB mic to be a beginner mic. I mean, yes, you can get pro audio out of a USB mic. A little trouble with the hammer there, and... <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna destroy the box too bad. <laughs> it worked though. <laughs> But Ooh, the, the, uh, the trick to getting good audio is not, it's not all about the mic. It's a lot about the acoustics and it's especially about the placement, right? Absolutely. So what's great about this thing is really honestly, the mic, obviously we know is the mic's going to be good at Sennheiser. Right. But is the arm any good? Is the boom any good, right? Let's take a look at this thing. How, what's the resistance? Oh. And is it adjustable? Probably. It feels pretty stout. It feels pretty sturdy, right. stout. But the Let's mic's see. not all that. There's a headings. knuckle here. Yep. Okay, that knuckle goes totally vertical. It's got a pretty long reach. Right. It's got like a preset tension on these, right? Mm -hmm. They're not adjustable. They're preset. Okay. But you're only going to use this mic with it, and that's probably probably. But to. it is a it is a standard five eighths or three eighths thread, so this could work with other mics. And it has a cable channel in it, Ooh. so it could run other kind of mic cables too, right? Okay. And then it has a nice, beefy, stable, sturdy-looking uh, tabletop clamp. Which looks really nice. It's got a really nice machined yeah. fit to it. There's no slop and wobble. Nothing less from the Germans who make that stuff. You would not. And that is what you're getting. This this is so already I'm impressed, right? <laughs> Man, we haven't even looked at I mic. like stuff like this. This is the stuff that makes a difference, right? I know I'm burying the lead. I'm opening everything except the mic first. In this box, uh, a nice pretty long 
USB cable. USB C to USB C. It's USB to C, so it's going to be ready to rock in all your all your modern laptops. Looks to be a pretty. Let me see. Six. Oh, 10, 10 to 12 foot long wow. USB cable. Wow. Pretty impressive. That can be useful. And finally, the thing that we're actually here for. All right. Is the, Get it undressed. Is the microphone. Ooh, ah, How it ooh. comes. There it is. So this is an interesting design because the microphone has a mount on the base and it has an integrated tilting mechanism. So if this was standing directly on a desk stand, you can tilt it toward you mm -hmm. up off the desk. So I think the, the basic version without the arm has like a little desktop stand. So interesting design, having it tilt, right? Um, looking at the back, we have our USB-C connector, a headphone jack. So if you're doing podcasting or Zoom calls, it's built in there. Um, and then on the front is the three controls I always look for on a USB mic. What do we got? Gain, mm -hmm. headphone monitor level okay. or volume. Is it a mix? And a headphone monitor mix okay. between microphone and, and computer. And playback. Okay. These are the basic things I expect to see these days on a USB mic. I, I, I know the roads and I know others. I, I'm annoyed when they don't include an actual gain knob on the mic. Right, because then you have to go into the software. And it's, a lot of times it, they have the software that goes with it. Yeah, you have to use their software in the case right. of like the road, right? So this puts all those controls on the face of the unit itself. And bonus, which is really, really helpful, if you're doing anything live, it has a mic cut or a mic mute button. Cough button. On the, yeah, cough button or a mute, cut the mic mute button right here. That is fantastic. So I, I have never plugged this thing in before. I just want to plug it in just to see what lights up on it. If it, assuming it has <laughs> some kind of lights on it, um, let's see what happens when we plug it in. Three, two, one. Ooh, Ooh it does have a light. Okay, it's is, got some is, lights. Is that a, is that a meter on there though? So it's got a gain. It's got a light ring around the mic gain knob, but it's not a meter. Oh, it doesn't change intensity as you speak. Okay, and then it's got the mic mute button. Oh, and that's nice. So when the mic mute is on, it, twins red. it lights up in a bright red. So you know the mic is off. You don't want to be embarrassed by being heard when the mic is on, no. on by mistake. So what what's the takeaway? Obviously, we're not going to do a real audio test with it today. There's no real practical way to do that because it's USB. So we will, I will be doing that at some point on the George the Tech YouTube channel. Stay tuned for that. But it's a... It's a good feeling mic. It feels it feels like it's it's substantial. Not, it's not plasticky, junky feeling. It feels substantial. The knobs all feel the knobs and the buttons. They, everything feels Ooh. like a little extra attention to detail Just was the a, right was, amount of drag. Like yeah, really the knobs have tripod. a nice have a nice drag to them. There's nice and. It just feels of quality, which is, you know, if Sennheiser is going to have a mic with their name on it at whatever price point, and I think, I think this is around two hundred US with the arm. Don't quote me on that. Um, you know, it has to be up to par, no matter what the price is that they're selling it for. That's why I was amazed when they sent me a USB mic. I never thought they were going to make a mic that was in this sort of affordable. Yeah, I wonder what know, kind of a capsule point. it has in it. Yeah, that we don't know. Obviously, it's definitely got a an internal pop filtering going on because you cannot see inside there. Right. So we'll have to find out more. It, I'm guessing because of the the price point of the mic, and it's probably like a small to medium capsule, but it doesn't say anywhere very obvious. And I don't want to hate this draw on forever. But anyway, when I get a mic to unbox or get anything to unbox, it's fun to be able to do it. <laughs> so I figured, what the hey? There are people making millions of dollars doing unboxing videos. <laughs> you ever seen that guy unbox therapy? Yeah, yeah. His studio is like this humongous room with LED lighting on the ceiling that right. stretches the entire line. That's ridiculous. We're missing it somewhere along the line. Oh, what? my God. Yeah, I know. What did we do wrong? Um, yeah, it's got a little <laughs> it pictogram. Looks like an Ikea camera. <laughs> looks like an IT, <laughs> Ikea manual. 
what you'd expect coming from Europe, you know, because they have to cover a lot of languages. And it's got a QR code for additional documentation, online manual, et cetera, et cetera. But clearly it's plug and play. And it's obvious to me that they don't, and I think this is good, they're going the don't have a console proprietary control panel way. Right. They're going the plug it in. It's all hardware. All, it's all hardware. Yeah. And I think that's a plus, a plus. I really do. And this leads me into a rant. Not a rant, just a sort of a, a little food for, for food for thought thing. You're on. On the way here, a VIP client of mine I've been working with for a really long time texts me and says, I have a 911. And every time I see that, I'm like, oh. <laughs> it, gives me, it gives me hives. I give him a call, and he's like, I'm out. I'm not at home. I'm using my travel kit. And I can't get this thing to work, right? What do you got? Oh, I have the, you know, the Audient Evo 4. Don't you remember it? You know how many studios we work on, right? Oh, yeah, the Evo 4, the one that you use once or twice a year when you go on a trip. Yeah, that one. I'm instantly remembered why I do not recommend audio interfaces or any, even USB mics, any gadgets that require a, an understanding and a memorization of how certain buttons work you know what i mean like well okay well remember to get that mic to work you have to turn on phantom power do you remember how to turn on the phantom power well remember you have to press the number one mm -hmm. then you have to press the phantom power button now if you don't do this if, if this thing's in your home studio you're going to do this every single day right it's going to be rep repetition whatever you put something like this in a road kit that you use sporadically Maybe once or this? twice a year, um, and the mic doesn't work, it's not going to be obvious, right? So I really, really don't like using gear that requires a memorization or the reading of a manual just to get it to start functioning, like turning on phantom power, or wait a minute, I can't hear anything. How do I get my headphones? Well, you have to remember to push that button that looks like a Wi-Fi symbol, but it's actually your headphone level. Press that, then turn the... I mean, that is not what you want in a portable kit. You want, if you want something at the very basic, something like this with knobs that do one job each is what you're looking at. The MicPort Pro is always something I loved because it had one mic knob for gain, right. one knob for headphones, right. no menus, no proprietary software, easy to remember. The new version of the MicPort Pro, the new 3, it, it's good, but it still has that battery in it. You still have to make sure that battery is charged. Right. So the new the new hotness is definitely going to be the Passport VO. And I just want to let you guys know, it's still available. I'm going to get my plug-in now. It's still available. There's like 19 <laughs> of them left in the 100-unit batch that were getting made. And even though we didn't hit our $100, 100-unit goal, Mike Goodman from Centrin said, let's do it. Let's do this thing. So that thing is official now. It looks like I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> We're all going to have to buy one. <laughs> it's going to happen. But that the, 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 the design philosophy behind that thing was one knob per function. One knob or one switch per function. No menus. Nothing to have to remember. Everything is clearly labeled. Everything is straightforward. And that, I think, is what's really critical for a travel kit. The very last thing before we talk about booths, I added the word soundproof. Is that what we talking about? Soundproof? Yeah, pretty or much. Or just in general. Yeah. Um, it's just a little mi micro rant or a, maybe another reminder about Chrome. Chrome, the, the web browser, if you're doing anything multimedia or even not multimedia, just day to day stuff like click this button to upload a file, those things send, tend to stop working in Chrome after a while. Devices seem to mysteriously stop working. Audio things don't seem to work correctly. Chrome seems to be needing to be restarted just as often, probably actually arguably more often than your actual operating system. I find that I'm needing to restart Chrome to get things to work more than ever. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why this is, but think of it this way. The Chrome web browser is really an operating system Inside an operating system. Exactly. <laughs> it's another layer of an operating system. And if you're like me, and you do run a lot of your business on the web, then you have a lot of things open, you have a lot of tabs open, and so it comes up every single day. Even just getting our show on the air today, 
restart Chrome. I think that's going to fix it. Fix the problem. <laughs> um, my audio device isn't working. My Evo 4, the audio signal isn't reaching IPDTL. Right. It's running on Chrome, right? right? Let's restart Chrome. Oh, it's working now. <laughs> so, As I usually say, when in doot, reboot. <laughs> when in doot, reboot Chrome. Right. If you're using anything on Chrome. Anyway, that's it for the tech talk part for me. But let's talk a little bit about booths. Yeah, I you know, I usually base my basic basics on the stuff that I've dealt with this week. Because there's always something new. Somebody comes up, someone writes to me and says, should I get a new booth? And they send me, you know, a picture of like, okay, it looks like a you know basic acoustical booth. Mm -hmm. And they send me some audio. And I'm like, sounds fine. You know, it, it, acoustically, it sounds pretty good. Yeah, you got a little bit of a noise floor, but you're, you know, in a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and and so this person's like, well, should we invest in a big booth? My daughter is doing this, right? And we want to make sure that we're prepared for the future. What I usually tell people is, don't overthink this. And do you need a booth if you are in a very noisy place? If you are like in the flight path flight path of LaGuardia or LAX or O'Hare. Or or DFW, one of those places where on Broadway. Or, yeah, yeah. If you if you happen to live, uh, you know, in Midtown Manhattan and leave your window open, uh, yeah, you might need something like that. Uh, but then again, you live where you choose to live. So, but what are you, what are you looking for in a soundproof booth? And we have we have looked at a bunch of them. I mean, there, yeah, and there's a few more manufacturers. Some have come, some have gone. Uh, thinking that perhaps they can do it. And uh, what I have found is, depending on what your noise floor is, which is why I have my specimen collection cup, so I can hear exactly what's going on. And I say, give me five seconds of open mic silence, read some copy the way you normally would, and then 10 seconds of open mic silence, so I can hear your voice you know, juxtaposed to your background, as we like to say, you know, your signal to noise ratio or, you know, signal being your voice, noise being anything that's not your voice. And that can be everything. So we want to mitigate the amount of exterior noise. So the best way to do it is with a booth. And we know lots of manufacturers and we know the quality of these booths. The one thing that people don't realize is that all of these things were never really designed for voiceover. They were designed for musicians to practice their violin or their oboe or their saxophone or slide trombone around other people and not disturb them. Yeah, so that's right. they're soundproof going out and soundproof going in. So should you get a booth or not? Number of factors. One, what's your budget? Because you can spend up to ten, fifteen thousand dollars. Oh yes, you can. I, you know, I saw somebody who bought a double wide in downtown Los Angeles in a big apartment building, mm -hmm. and it was like it wasn't a room in a room. It was like another apartment inside his apartment. Wow. Big, big loft type of apartment. Yeah, uh, you can spend an awful lot of money on these. For sure. The question is investment versus return on investment. How the only reason you'd need something like that is if you're doing a lot of remote sessions, if you know you're a, a a busy working voice actor and you are doing a lot of stuff, you know via Source Connect or something, and you've got to have it quiet. I call it quiet on demand. Quiet on demand. Quiet on demand. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, what do you do? Do you buy a booth or not? Look at your budget. Really get your sound analyzed in your space so we know what you're working with. And we can determine, okay, you don't need to spend a fortune. What you need to re need to do, and we've sort of discovered this over working with a lot of people, you know, people playing basketball next door, or there's a construction site or something like that. Mm -hmm. If you could reduce the exterior noise by about 10 dB, if it's just incidental noise from the house or the apartment building, uh, and, and it's literally impossible, no matter what you buy, no matter what you do, to eliminate outside noise. Yeah, I mean, or all of, all of the noise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but uh, if you can keep it at a low frequency, under the frequency of your mm -hmm. voice, that's good. So if you 10 can decibels is 50%. That's right. 
10 decibel reduction is half the noise. Right. So if you have a moderately good booth, that's really all you need. So don't go hog wild on this. But first, let's analyze your yeah. space. Let's look at your situation. Are, how much work are you doing remotely? Mm -hmm. And uh, how much, you know, audiobook people probably need it uh, because they need to have a consistent noise floor and stuff like that. But don't, you know, like, should I buy a booth? It's not a question you just need to ask yourself. It's someone you need, you need to ask someone like George or I to really listen to your room to see how much noise reduction you need physically. Yeah, how much, the microphone is going to hear what it hears. Your ears are going to hear probably something different. Right. Like, so how that mic hears you and what noises the mic hears is really what is the most important. Exactly. You know, like you never hear your refrigerator until you're sitting in your kitchen and go, does the refrigerator make a noise? You know, it's always making a noise. Oh, you just constantly. don't notice it. You know, it's so funny. Our refrigerator makes an odd noise. It goes... <laughs> wow. Something like that, yeah. right? And we, we're, we're used to it, right? Right. Well, we have two friends stay over at the place as guests, right? <laughs> they're like, what and the hell is the, that? They're staying in the living room. <laughs> and they're like, your refrigerator. Sounds like a, sounds like a moaning animal, and I'm just like, oh my gosh! And now, yeah, you're right; it absolutely does. But you, tune, we tune it out. That's right. right. So you need that objective set of ears, right? And so you know, send it in. You know, go to our websites. We both have ways that we can listen to your audio and determine if indeed you need to make a booth, or do you just need to be in a quieter place? You That's know, right. If you're in one closet and you have an exterior wall. Go to a closet that has no exterior walls, and it will insulate it from a lot more uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, yeah, I'm gonna cause I'm gonna I'm gonna cause total chaos. Uh oh, I'm gonna turn this on is this. Not a mic. good idea. Here we go. Here we go. Here we I wasn't able to select the correct microphone beforehand. So I don't know. I just plugged in the mic. I don't know if I can choose the mic. One, two. Actually, maybe that's going to work now. One more try. Sue, do you hear a double? <laughs> do you hear two signals now? One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. I, I got to be added, added to the stream. Okay. There we go. There we go. Well, now it seems go. like a really good, good time, really good time to take a break. Just so, so. <laughs> <Let's> take, <laughs> take, take a break. I'm on, I'm mic, on now. mic now. I hear myself, I hear myself echoing, echoing back, back, so I know so it's working. Now we know, now we know this mic, mic works. works. And now you and know, now you know what it sounds like. And okay, we can get back to business. Once again, if you've got a question for us, now would be a really good time to put it in the chat room, whether you're in Facebook Live or on YouTube Live. We'd love to hear from you. You probably got a lot of questions after all the rambling we've just done. So get into it and <laughs> Are start these writing guys your questions. Sane? Yes. Might be one well, of them. We know we're not if we've been doing it this long. Anyway, we'll be right back after these messages in VoiceOver Body Shop, so do not go away. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. As As voice actors, we need to hear the clear, transparent, and honest sound of our voices. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 provide both that accurate transparent sound with enhanced mid-range audio, less bass, and the creature comforts voice workers deserve. Clearly different from traditional studio headphones, the upper mids and highs are clear as a bell, no muffling or cross-bleeding between frequencies. Like a pair of studio monitors, the low is there, but at the same level as the rest of the spectrum. They're comfortable like no other phones I've worn. That's because Harlan used actual leather for the pads. It's like putting on a pair of leather gloves for your ears. They're also very light for their size, as Harlan made them from aluminum instead of plastic. The headband is flexible like a watch band, and the plug comes out for walking away. Get the only headphones designed for VO. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 for just $149 with free shipping from voiceoveressentials.com. Oh. Hey, it's time to thank our sponsor, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, Source Nexus, and a whole slew of helpful tools for engineers and producers that record talent, musicians, voice actors all around the world. The tool that you guys need if you're wanting to be ready to get the big gigs, the ones that the agents tend to be the ones that are getting you as, as actors, 
they're going to very likely be expecting you to have Source Connect. Now, here's the secret, and they don't want me to tell you this. You don't have to buy it yet. You, what you want to do is go to source-elements.com, get your account set up, get your iLock account set up, go through the process of getting everything online, get your 15-day demo, and have it at the ready so you know how it operates, you know that you've got a studio that sounds good enough for, for Source Connect, and you have all the tools in place. Then, when you do have a session that you need to do, if you're very well versed in how it works and you've practiced, you'll be ready to go and you'll be able to activate your license when you're ready to start. And that can be a subscription. You don't have to buy a license fully up front. So this is a great way to get going and not spend a penny. Um, but if you do need extended help, they're there for you. If you sign up for a subscription, you, we can also provide help at georgeD.tech if you need it. But Source Connect is the tool for pros to connect to other pros for the big voiceover gigs out there. Anyway, thanks, Source Elements. We're going to get on to the rest of the show, but right after this break. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. All right, we're back. But we're on a single shot because George was not paying attention. No, it looks like we're on the right shot. Boo! There we go. Okay. Oh, Sue went to the wide shot just in case. Oh. Way to go, Sue. She's 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 on, on the ball. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's time to answer your questions. And again, you still have time if Ooh, you want to throw it in the chat room. Uh, let's start with uh, the first one here from Justin Ramos. All righty. Do you want to read that one? Oh, sure. It says, I have a question for Tech Talk. Well, gosh darn it, you've come to the right place since we're here. Uh, what is the simplest digital audio workstation, or DAW as we like to call it, for Android phones? Or should I just bite the bullet and get an iPad? I have an iRig pre-HD interface and want to audition on the go. I also just wanted to give a shout out to the guys for leaving up Ewabs episodes. Ewabs 166 hey. is how I discovered that the iRig interface. Uh, Zurich and Doug Turkel were on. Oh, that's the one I did down in Miami, I guess. Yeah. They were both on. I was probably in Miami at the time. And that was more than eight years ago. How cool is that? Wow. Thanks for thanks for the trip yeah. down memory lane. Yeah. Saw Doug over the weekend. It was great. Oh, that's it's good. It's been a long time. Um, I haven't had an Android phone in a long time. I, I was an Android user up until the iPhone 11 came out, and that's when I jumped to the Apple world. Um, think about what the use case of this is. Is this a first setup? Is this a travel setup? Is this a supplement to what you have at home? It kind of depends. If this is like a first, my first VO studio situation, absolutely I would get like a used iPad, even a brand new iPad, whatever the current iteration is is around three hundred dollars so it's pretty reasonable you can get a couple year old one for less money if you really do want an ipad device or a touch screen device i would i would highly recommend going ipad now there, there i don't know of anything as simple as twisted wave and twisted wave does not there's not a version of twisted wave yet for android there's only one for ios Right. and mac and windows and it works great but ios but it, it does work great right and it's very easy to use i think there's a wave pad for ios and android don't quote me on that but if you want to look for an app called wave pad 
they might have an Android version. Um, but I, I can't ACH, for that. as I recall. NCH? ACH. No, N- I think it's NCH. Whatever. It, yeah. WavePad. <laughs> WavePad. Just type in WavePad, you'll find it. I think they have an Android version. But if you're giving us the, the choice, well, should I get an iPad? I would, get, I would go with the iPad. Plus, you get way better battery life. You know, a new iPad, the battery's going to last for days. Yeah, we just bought a new iPad for, for my son, and he's very happy with it. Yeah, it's a good product. It really is. Um, yeah, so I hope that works out for you. Let us know what you decide to do and how it works out for you watching ewabs episodes there's all still there there's some actual useful content from way back when more than just for a good laugh (laughs) just don't watch episode number one well actually go back and watch episode (laughs) if you want to laugh (laughs) all right let's from jeff here go for it hey jeff our very own jeff holman says i've got my shag rug picked out for my van I mean, for my on-camera audition space (laughs) to reduce the boominess of the hardwood floors of his room. Would a carpet pad help out the cause as well? And should I look for a particular material for the carpet pad or a certain thickness? Seems to be overthinking it just a little bit. The details. Jeff is all about the details. details. Hey, who's on who's on HBO? You or me or Jeff? Good point. Sorry. Boom, Jeff. (laughs) Um... So I, I would say the carpet pad won't make a big difference. What it'll make a difference for is comfort. Right. You can audition barefoot. It's exactly. A lot right. easier. It will be a lot nicer standing on that rug on a carpet pad. What thickness you need, go with, go with the thickest that feels weird, comfortable to you. If you go too thick, it feels weird, right? It feels squishy and, I don't know, strange. Um, but, I, I mean, if it was me, I, I'm not needing to literally do a tap dance on camera for an audition i would want to have a comfortable thing to stand i'd like to see that though. yeah and if my feet aren't in frame because you're doing on camera auditions and i'm not going to worry about what's on the floor i want it to be as comfortable as possible probably don't want to be wearing shoes if i don't have to i would go with a nice thick carpet pad and a nice plush rug but i i don't know if one carpet pad over another will unless he's auditioning for a nike commercial or something in which case Carpet might not be the best thing to have there. Or a basketball commercial. Right, exactly. Maybe, well, you're tall enough. I'm guessing you're not doing a basketball act. Um, anyway, <laughs> so let us know how that works out, Jeff. I know you've been slowly putting together your your ultimate on-camera um, audition space. So yeah, looking forward to seeing how it comes out when it's all done. Okay. Patricia Andrea on hey. YouTube. Uh Maybe this was from a former conversation we had, but uh, Cinco Mike D2, have you had a chance to try it more? Well, I haven't tried it personally at all, but Neither I've definitely I. heard the mic yeah. a lot of times. I have too. People send it in samples all the time. When you think when you think of that mic, what do you think of? It sounds like a mic. It sounds fine, right? Right. It sounds kind of like I always think of it as sounding like fine. Right. It's not a 416 like this one. It doesn't sound like a 416. Right. It looks like a 416, but it definitely doesn't sound like one. It's a very, if I recall, a flat sounding mic, right? And when we say flat, what the heck are we talking about? It's really kind of how much it, it, it um, boosts T's and K's and the articulation in your voice. Right. The mouth or, or sounds. overemphasizes the low end or de-emphasizes the low end. Right, right. What we so, call coloration. Yeah. And the D2, from what I can, what I've gleaned, is it has very little color and it's very honest. It's very flat. Which is fine. It's not a bad thing. Um, you know, I think, I think it's not a bad choice. I would want to try it in context with maybe a large diaphragm condenser like a Rode NT1 or an Audio-Technica. 2035 or you know something like that a vanguard v4 um or this mojave mv5 or the M, yeah the mojave m that's at the m50 50 i think yeah. it's a 50 yeah four five hundred dollar range how that's does it kinda, sound Sounds from the great. two 2035 audio tending it to this that's kind of the range you want to look at spending no more than five hundred dollars honestly um, Unless you're buying a 416 or something like that, but this this probably is not your first mic. No, right? This is your a more of an aspirational mic, honestly. 
There are a lot of great sounding mics that sound right up where this one does for a lot less money. The D2 does not sound like this. But what a D2 does because it's a shotgun mic is it will not pick up as much sort of house noise. Right. Random outside. Not house. quite as hyper cardioid as this one. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know, but so, maybe slightly wider, but it's not bad. Know, I mean, bad. for the money, you know what? I prefer the Audio Technica AT875R. I just pulled it out of my box of mics the other day yeah. and did a little video with it. I keep forgetting how damn good that mic sounds. Right. It's, well, it's designed to be a video mic like that. Yeah. I've used it on dollars. Yeah, it, it works great. I like the sound of that mic better than the Cinco. Honestly, if I had the there two right side by side, I, I would probably go with the 875R yeah. from Audio Technica. All right. All right. From Bill Hepburn. Now, this would right. be an interesting one because okay. uh, since last week, Dan and George, that would be you and me, uh, brought up the Y Reaper for voiceover and when it's not the most intuitive and wondered why not just Twisted Wave. Well, here's my two cents. Everybody's got an opinion. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to Reaper, clearly there is many schools of thought. Uh, I'm pretty new to the VO business, but I chose Reaper because I wanted something more than Audacity. The price was right at 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to pay a subscription. Mm -hmm. I had three months free trial, which is nice. And Mike at Booth Junkie, who we don't mention a whole lot except when he's on the show, had great videos on how to simplify it for VO. I figured as the first DAW that made it a good choice. These were my decision criteria, and it might be different strokes for different folks. Well, you gotta, the thing is, Twisted Wave has free trial. Aud Audition has a free trial. Audacity is free. Uh, some other ones are free. Osin Audio. I mean, there's a lot of different packages out there. He's clearly reacting to uh, some rant I did about Reaper. No, I think I, I, I was last. Well, maybe you had a rant. I had the rant two weeks ago about Reaper. <laughs> I'm like, why I are mean, you using Reaper? Everybody's saying, I'm using Reaper. We why? just had a two part class that I was taught by Steve Cunningham, who knows Reaper really well. And I watched those two four hours of content, and I was like, wow. <laughs> Your head I, was I, full. I was, I was, my <laughs> eyes were, I was like, this is a lot. So the way I look at Reaper is, it's like a, you, you, you made stuff with Legos. <laughs> yeah, I tried. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Twisted Wave is like a die-cast metal car. Right. You pull it out of the box, you play with it. Right. It looks beautiful, it's shiny, it's made well, and it works. It does what it's designed it to do. Play. Yeah, yeah. Reaper is a box, the box of Legos. It has a picture of a spaceship <laughs> on it. <laughs> you got to try to build the spaceship. And it That's has an 12 excellent metaphor. friggin' pieces. <laughs> okay, that's Reaper. Yeah, different strokes for different folks. Like, I, I'm either one will get you down the road, one will take a tremendous amount of time and preparation, and maybe that's, for you, part of the fun. For many actors, that is not part of the fun. They don't want to have fun, they just want to hit record and record their voice. <laughs> <laughs> they will break out in hives when they see the amount of prep. Now, I mean, Reaper can work with no prep, but it will never feel as efficient and easy to use as Twisted Wave without doing the necessary steps to change its configuration, customize it, and give it the, the tool sets, the buttons, and all the sh keyboard shortcuts necessary to make it work as efficiently as Twisted Wave. So, yeah, it's fine. Use what works for you, but believe me, we work with actors day in, day out, and actors on the whole do not want to learn and go through the learning curve to learn reaper whether it would benefit them in the long term or not so mm. yeah all right uh patricia andrea says uh i have a former autometry booth i sent a video to dan got it for 500 bucks i remember that <laughs> wow patricia. what a deal added home theater curtains inside i did the specimen cup and dan said it sounds great because it does. Well, those things are built at a different class. They're on a different level from all the right. the, the ISO booth brands that we talk about, the right. Studio Bricks, Whisper Room, right. Vocal Booth. They are built like, um, well, industrial. Right. And, and the thing is, is, if you can get one for 500 bucks, you know, 
and find a way to get it into your yeah, house and get it into the and house. These are these are these are booths that are made for for um, uh, audiologists, right? For doing ear tests. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a, did an ear test of, uh, last year, and I'm well overdue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the uh, the the uh, they said, "Oh, your hearing's fine." I'm like, "Don't tell my wife." <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, but yeah, I but anytime you can get a hold of one of those booths, like from you know some institution that's getting rid of a bunch of them, they're very heavy. The, and the thing is that they don't need a whole lot of acoustical treatment in them. I found that fat. It's like they're integrated into the design. Generally. Yeah, yeah. They have like a metal uh, grid mesh on it. Yeah, grid, yeah. and then behind that is probably like a rock wool or some kind of an yeah. insulation. And right. yeah, so they're they're amazing yeah, for granite because <laughs> it's really heavy. <laughs> you get the one from yeah. Tony Hoover here. Okay. Um, I've heard good things about the Sure PGA one eight one mic. But the self noise is rather high. Yep. Someone suggested using downward expansion to reduce it. What the heck is downward expansion anyway? Well, that's well a, first that's of all, don't thing. buy the wrong mic and right. then use plugins to fix it. Okay. So one, yeah. if the mic is already too noisy, why aren't you looking at the other 200 mics that aren't? <laughs> there are many, many, many microphones that don't require a downward expander to be usable. Okay. So that's your first clue. It may not be the right choice. That being said, what's a downward expander? It's like jumbo shrimp. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) A downward expander is a processing tool. We call it a dynamics tool that as the the volume of the sound going into the mic or into the recording, as it drops below a certain point, we call it a threshold, then the level drops off on a ramp, like a slope. And That's can, what it expands. Yeah, and you can is. adjust the slope. You can and, adjust the slope. And where the threshold is. Exactly. So if you set that threshold too high, it's going to start cutting off like the F in football. You'll get football. You'll get football. <laughs> because the, the, you, the F sound is too weak. And it doesn't go above the threshold, and you get football. Yeah, I think that's what they play in Luxembourg is football. Football. You get football. <laughs> exactly. Now, if you set the threshold too low, then it doesn't do its job, and you still get noise. So, and, uh, and it'll fade in, like. Yeah, and sometimes like with that. breaths, it goes. <laughs> the breaths have these weird <laughs> little. It's difficult to get these things to work smoothly and sound really. It's what good. we call a noise gate. Yeah, and sometimes they end up sounding like a noise gate. And a noise gate is even worse because that actually just shuts the audio off completely, which you don't want. So that's what an expander is, and it's part of dynamics processors like compressors and limiters. It's in that same umbrella of of audio processing tools. Mm -hmm. All right. Gee, jumped away from the questions here. Uh, Oh, yeah, so did I. Sorry about that. From J. Horace Black. Hey, Jay. Jay Horace Black. Jay, nice to hear from you. Currently have a 2012 Mac Mini SSD HD 16 gigabytes of RAM. I did five years ago and went to the next one. Yeah. And then went to the next one after that. Yeah. Um, Me too. Needing to update my hardware, new Mac Mini or 32 gigabyte memory MP, MB. Oh, MacBook Pro. MacBook Pro. Could I get away with a MacBook Pro 14 inch in docking station? Of course. Yeah. I'm in cybersecurity. Uh, program so need 32 gigabytes of ram to run virtual windows for class uh, mm. yeah. uh i could just get mac studio to uh, however uh 14 megabyte macbook pro could serve both needs and right now with my discounts i can get uh an m2 macbook pro 32 gigabyte memory for 1850 and do that <laughs> question answer jay <laughs> yeah $1,850 for a MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of memory? If you stole it. Yeah, I would get, I would get that. Yeah. Because that will do everything. That's going to do everything the Mac Mini will do. Right. That's going to pretty much do everything a Mac Studio will do. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a no-brainer. I think that's the, the thing that people don't understand about Macs. The operating system is an operating system. And whether you're using a Mac Mini or a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air yeah. or a Mac Studio, which takes up half your room... Um, it's still the same operating system. It's a matter of processing power. If you're just doing voiceover, you don't need 
that much stuff. But as Jay is saying, well, I also use it in security. He's using it for two different jobs. Right. right. So, he, you know, will it work for the other thing? Most likely. Will it work for voiceover? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. No problem. And, and even the most basic, basic Mac Mini for 599 bucks will be beautiful for a voiceover setup. Right. You'll have no problem. It's really all you need. It's just for you power users like Jay, you're going to need some more complicated, more capable, not complicated, but more capable systems. Right. You and I both use, well, I, we're both on M1, the, the M1 chip. M1 Mac Mini, yeah. You know, is it worth it to go to the M2 chip? I don't know. I think that apparently, from what I hear, the performance is maybe 30% more. But faster but that's like, or? That's like, to me, that's like going from a Tesla to a Tesla model <laughs> <laughs> dual motor like right. you can get the cheap one it goes only zero to 60 and only goes zero to 60 in seven seconds oh i want to go from zero to 60 in five seconds oh well you're gonna like how freaking fast do you need to go right especially if you're recording <laughs> starts thursday i mean right. come on you can do that i know i know all right john o'rourke your turn now uh, what have we used to physically isolate an air conditioner compressor how about maybe springs? Um, it's more of a low rumble, and I'm dealing with more than just motor noise. Turning it off is not always an option. Yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> if you live in the valley like Dan does, yep. turning it off is hey, not an option. There's, there's an air conditioner in here. Maybe, perhaps, Ooh. it's time for a new air conditioner. Yeah. My compressor was really loud, so I went out and I called somebody, I said, and it died. The compressor died. I mean, yeah. it was probably 15 years old. Yeah. And I ordered a new one, got a one that was not expensive. Mm -hmm. The guy came out and installed it that day. Sue, go to the go to the wide camera for a second and I'm gonna I'm gonna point the camera at our new at our air conditioner. So here we go. I'm gonna swing this around. Is it is it gonna reach go, that far? I think you're going the wrong way. Oh jeez. It goes pretty slow too. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to go this okay. far, but let's find out. No, it, gonna, it does 360, and then go up. And there you far. can see my my antique radio collection, yeah. and then go up, yeah. and then over a little bit more. I think I'm at the end of its little of its little neck. Oh, there it is. It's in the corner of the frame. Yeah. All right, now go Sue, up, go. go up a little more. I think Sue went back to the shot. There we go. No, yeah, she's still there. There okay. it is. How so my Bose speaker and all the other garbage. See that and, thing on the wall there? That white, that white box that's on the wall right there. Yeah, we're at the edge of the. Yeah, that's as far as I can go. Yeah, that's the air conditioner in this room. It's running right now, and it is really quiet. You can't hear it. That's called a mini split ductless air conditioner. Fabulous. This is the way to go in a studio. I, and when these are running on low or or quiet mode, you can actually record in the same room as the air conditioner it's incredible yeah. i know that's probably not what you're asking because you may may not want to spend three thousand dollars to get one of these right I now spend three thousand dollars for how this. much was that put in installed and everything oh, it was 27 that's not bad no. that's not bad no. well you have to look at where your noise is coming from you see so you can come back to the oh, there we go cool um you have to look at where your noise is actually coming from in your system but there's a very good chance that your noise is coming from more than just the motor like you said so the condenser unit that makes noise the blower unit that makes noise and then the air physically traveling through the ducts also make noise and that tends to be what makes the rumbling right the low frequency rumble 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 <laughs> so putting things on springs will not help that right because that's just the air traveling down your duct work the only way you're going to stop that is to reduce the speed of the airflow or and or increasing the volume or, or the size of your ducts so the air isn't going as fast. Right. Those are the two things that are going to fix that rumble. Yeah. You Buy know? a new air conditioner. Yeah, it's it's going to be quite a quite a process. Yeah. The, to, the ductless systems are just so quiet. You know, and the, the higher pressed ones are ridiculously silent. quiet. The Mitsubishi is really crazy quiet. Yeah. And you can get up to four zones. Right. So you can get one condenser outside. And that can run up to four different zones. And it's way more efficient right. energy-wise. Right. Way, way, way. I think he's asking, how can I, what what filters can I use to, to not do that and maybe not do that? No, I mean, I can set up processing that will get rid of that noise for you if that's what you want to do. 
you know, hit me up. We have a processing preset uh, service. It's called audio processing presets. I can probably come up with a filter that will reduce it or re eliminate it completely. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want to do on a budget, that's fine too. Let us know. All righty. We got through them all. Wow. And gave good answers. Whether they were the right answers, at least they sounded good. <laughs> it's the most important thing. Uh, anyway, if you have a question for us, and perhaps we're out of time for getting more questions in here, though, uh, all you got to do is write to us at, you ready, Sue? The guys at VOBS.TV. And that will get you first in the queue. So if you have a problem during the week or you suddenly it's like, what about this? Or well, what about it's top that? of mind. Yeah. Send the email. Send a mail email to the guys at VOBS.TV, and you will be first in the queue, as they say in Europe, uh, and in Canada, interestingly enough, and probably in Mexico, only I think it's a different word. But. I've picked it up now. I like to say it. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's why I used it. And uh, we're, we're happy to answer those questions. And, of course, that's why we're here. George and I are professional home studio consultants and engineers, and... It's what we do. It's what we've been doing for a thing, man. For a long time. Other people are like, yeah, I've, I've been doing this a while. I'm real old school. I learned, you know, from the the analog radio days how to do this stuff and progressed into digital. So it was mm -hmm. like, okay. And I mean, we you were in analog too. We've about this stuff for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the other thing is, is that we've been working with so many people and so many studios. When we first started out doing this, we were like, okay, we know what we're doing. Take a thousand studios later, and chances are we've learned something. Yeah, we've heard prop. We've every heard every single everything. scenario at this point, and every type of noise at this point. That's right. Yeah. So, well, that's going to do it for this segment of the program. Uh, we'll be right back after these important messages to tell you a little bit about what's coming up. So, don't go away. We'll be right back here on Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the Voiceover Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right, let's take a slightly different angle on this. If you want to qualify as a professional in the voiceover business, especially from World Voices, of which I am president, we have very specific parameters that qualify you as a professional. A certain amount of paid jobs in a certain amount of time. But one of the most important things is you have to have a web footprint. What does that mean? It means you got to have a website. If you're a voice actor, if you don't have a website, they're never going to find you. Dave Walsh was telling us last week, you got to have a website so people can find you. What do you need on your website? You need your name your demos, and how to contact you. You know, if you want to have some fancy website to show people how artistic you are or something like that, go for it. It's going to take a long time to do that. So what's an easier way? New website from voiceactorwebsites.com. It's called voiceactor.com, where they have templated websites. So you go in there. You can start for free and get yourself online really fast. And in about half an hour, 45 minutes, you can choose from a number of templates. And the you know, Joe Davis, who runs this company, says, we got new templates. They're fabulous. You can customize the templates, put your picture where you want, put your demos where you want, put your bio where you want. 
Not that anybody really is going to read your bio. It's like, okay, uh, where, where is this person from? More importantly, what does this person sound like and how, you know, how much contrast do they do in their reads and stuff like that? It's templated websites from voiceactorwebsites.com. Voiceactor.com. I got to get used to that. Voiceactor.com. And start for free and then be as little as $20 a month to have a great website that you have complete control over. Go to voiceactor.com. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as WOVO. Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, Talent. Our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with the, the chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. living. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom, VOBS.TV. Yeah, and we're enjoying it, too. We always do. It's more fun in the studio. It really is. You know, <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot more fun. It's more comfortable. It's more fun. It's more challenging because we have a lot more stuff to set up. Right. <laughs> multiple cameras a bunch of mics you know so there's, a, there's more to do but it, it's still fun we we still love setting up the studio because it's it's what we do that's right and we've been doing it a long time and we do it better than everybody else <laughs> um they can't even compare boy i'm really egotistical tonight i'm not sure what, <laughs> you're what's going on you're on a tear yeah maybe that's <laughs> what it is so anyway next week on this very show you'll still be watching this because we're taking memorial day off Mm -hmm. Hard to get a guest in here for Memorial Day. Yeah, and I'm traveling to Pennsylvania. On, and, uh, by the time you see this, I'm already in Pennsylvania, spending a couple weeks with my parents. And my daughter Elijah is flying up from Georgia to mm -hmm. spend a week with us over Memorial Weekend. So that's going to be really, really right. nice. And I'll be recovering from neck surgery. So Oh, man, we hope it goes smoothly. I have no doubt. We've got uh, the best best doctors. This guy's here in great. So Cal, yeah. yeah. Although there there was the... the uh, the cardiologist I went to last week who said, all right, who's doing the surgery? And I told him where he was. He goes, oh, he got his license back. <laughs> Not a but good don't... thing for a cardiologist to say. Maybe it's like, well, let me see if this guy has a heart attack. <laughs> he was just yanking my chain. <laughs> anyway, in three weeks' time, well, two weeks, because this is next week, uh, our good friend Deb Irwin, a uh, person Deb we Irwin. really like, is awesome. going to come on and talk about all sorts of stuff. Sounds and, good. Uh, yeah. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, in the coming weeks, we got a great improv teacher. Tim Powers is going to join us. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And someone from the UK, hopefully. Okay. But we may have to, that might be a little tough because it's going to be time, very early in the morning. Time yeah. shifting might be required. It, it we may. might have to pre-tape that. <laughs> Maybe. Because <laughs> I had a fun time talking to him at WovoCon a couple of weeks All ago. All right. We'll figure that one out. All right. Well. First off, uh, we uh, need to thank the people who donate to us. And you can donate to us, too. Just go to our website, and there's a little button that says, Donate Now. I think it still works. Uh, money still keeps coming in. All right, then it I think it's for all these people that forgot how to unsubscribe. Okay, well, still we got to thank money. <laughs> guys like Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Tom Pinto. Shelly Avellino. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Shauna Pennington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, and Aunt Sandra, Sandra Manwiller. Manwiller. Thank you guys for helping us out, making the show technically perfect, which it was tonight. Boom. Drop the bottle. No, don't do that. No, no. Um, and camera. you hear those names all the time because, well, they subscribe. You can subscribe for like as little as a buck 
or if there was something that was particularly amazing or just a great guest and you just want to give us a little thank you, you can make a one-time uh, donation to the show. Thank you. We Absolutely. appreciate that. And remember that George and I, home studios is what we do. It's so, our bag. Right. So you can go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com or, if you want to work work with me or over to George's place of business, which is? George the dot tech, which is really a team of people, not just about me anymore. And uh, as a fan of the show, you can always get 10% off, whether we're doing webinars, one-on-ones, anything, just put in VOBS Fan 10 for right. 10% off. Outstanding. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's Voice Over Essentials. Voice Over Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActor.com. And WorldVoices.org. World Voices.org. World-Voices.org. World the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. So go on over and join, and next year you can go to Wovocon, which was fabulous this year we just had a great time. i'll go next year i promise not a thousand people more under like 100, 100 under 100, 100 yeah. maybe maybe 120 yeah but you get to see all your friends and make new friends and more one-on-one -on -one time right you'll make friends for a lifetime when you go to these things that's mm -hmm. pretty important uh of course jeff holman kicking butt in the chat room tonight thanks jeff while starring on tv and movies and all that <laughs> other stuff hollywood holman yeah that's what he what, what's what he calls himself uh, thanks, uh, thanks to uh, Jeff for doing that, and Sue Merlino sitting there in her house going doop boop boop. Thank you, thank you, Sue. We really she didn't have it. to deal with any of our BS tonight. That's Just right. Had to listen to it. That's right, all. and of course Lee Penny simply for being Lee, Lee Penny. Penny. Well, kids, this isn't an easy business. It there's you got competition. You've got tech, tech. <laughs> you've got to have talent, but it's most important, at least to George and I that you know your audio is right but we've discovered that really if it sounds good it is good i'm dan leonard and i'm george woodham and this is voiceover body shop or vo b s tech talk tech talk tech talk tech talk, tech talk. Tech talk. see you after memorial day guys have a good week tech talk.